Hello everyone, it's Stella here. And Taryn from the Dice Tower. Thanks for joining us. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Books of Time, a game designed by Philip Guevach and published by Board and Dice. Let's get to it. In Books of Time, players are chroniclers competing against each other to record the best of historical industry, science and trade. Players will spend resources to write new pages into their books, read from those books to use their powerful actions, take actions from the general chronicle, and advance on the civilization tracks all in the aim of gaining the most victory points. Whoever has the highest score when the chronicle draws to a close will be the winner. To set up, each player places four markers on the civilization board, one at the bottom of each of the three tracks and one on the score track at the starting value of 10. Give each player a two-part player board and three empty books, one red, one green and one yellow. Fill each book with its starting pages. You'll find all the page cards of that colour and you'll be looking for the ones which don't have this banner icon in the top right corner. Then for each player's book, find one number one card and one number two card and place them in that order on the right hand side of that book. Leftover starting cards at lower player counts are returned to the box. Give each player nine objective tiles, three in each of the colours, and within each colour the icons on the back must match, but not all of your icons must match. Then arrange them into stacks like so. These represent different difficulties of objectives which you'll be chasing through the game. Shuffle all of the red, green and yellow non-starter cards into a deck, and deal six to each player. Players look through these and choose one which they wish to immediately write into one of their books, meaning take the page, place it on the right hand side of that coloured book, and gain any reward printed in this immediate box. Players choose another two of their page cards to place into the first two spaces of their player board like so. The other three cards are discarded. Now give each player additional starting resources of two paper and two pens. From the rest of the page deck, deal four cards into a face-up row. These four cards are known as the offer. Shuffle up the 23 brown chronicle cards and remove eight from the game. Then all the rest of the cards are placed on the right hand side of the chronicle book. These 16 pages, including the covers, will time the 16 rounds of the game. Place the chronicle up onto the lectern. It's shared by all players, so this makes it more visible. Flip to three pages from the end and place the chronicle bookmark in. This will tell players when there are three rounds to go. Then flip the entire chronicle back to the first page. Choose a first player and you're now ready to play. Books of Time is played over a total of 16 rounds. In each round, each player will take one turn, starting from the first player and going clockwise around the table. The first player never rotates from round to round. At the end of each round, players must turn the chronicle to its next page. And when the back cover of the chronicle is closed, the 16th round is complete and the game is over. On each turn, the player must choose and resolve one of these six actions. And either before or after that action may optionally choose to resolve one chronicle event. Which means to resolve the effect box on one of the two current face-up pages of the chronicle. Ignore these icons on the right hand card, this is for the solo mode. A large part of Books of Time is going to involve resolving the icons and effects on various page cards. And we'll introduce you to all the icons as we go through the actions. Here we see the icons for the four most basic resources. Both gaining and spending, which shows the X. These two are pens and paper. These are simply gained and spent as required. This is a file. Some more powerful actions cost a file as part of the cost, but you can always spend a file as either a paper or a pen as part of another action. 
This is the icon for victory points and they may be gained or spent for actions. And are tracked around the edge of the main board. You may not spend below zero points. So understanding the main resources, let's now have a look at the six options for your main action on your turn. The first action is draw, which is how you gain new pages to your player board. First, you may optionally pay two victory points to refresh, meaning you may discard any number of the four cards in the offer and replenish them from the top of the deck. You must now take exactly two cards either from the offer or the top of the deck. Each time you take a page from the offer, it's immediately refreshed from the deck. Once you've taken your two cards, add them one by one to the leftmost slot of your player board. If any slots are full, push forward the cards that are blocking the way, like so. If a card is ever pushed off the end of your player board, then discard it. Both subparts of this action may be triggered by other icons in the game. This icon allows you to refresh the offer for free, and this one lets you gain a page from the offer and add it to your player board. With this icon, it must come from the offer, not the deck. The second action is to write pages, and this is how you move pages from your player board into your books. You may write as many pages as you can afford on that turn, and you'll resolve each page one at a time going through the following steps. First, pay the cost currently printed underneath that page on your player board. Second, move that page down to the matching colored book, placing it on top of the right hand side. Thirdly, gain the immediate benefit printed in this small box at the bottom of the card. You can now move on to writing your next page if you wish to. And because you resolve these one at a time, any benefits gained from one page can be used to afford the next one. You will not move or slide any of the pages remaining in your player board. Writing a page is represented by this icon, the page with the down arrow, and this can be triggered from some card effects. Some of these have colour limitations and some of them don't. To resolve one of these, the page must come from your player board, but you won't pay the cost printed on the player board, only the cost on the card. The next three actions are all different ways of utilising the pages in your books once you've written them. The first is to activate a page. You choose a single one of your books and then resolve the effects on both sides of that book. You can resolve the pages in either order, but you must resolve one complete page before resolving the next. You do not gain any benefit in the immediate box with this action. At the end of the action, flip the book over to the next page. The fourth action, and second way to use your books, is to turn pages. Choose any number of your books, and this can include zero, and flip them over to their next pages. Then gain the immediate benefits printed at the bottoms of all three books. The fifth action and third way to use your books is to close a book. First, for keeping track of the action, it may be helpful to place your bookmark at your current page. Then flip the pages backwards, noting all of the immediate benefits on the cards that you flip through and gaining all of those benefits. You can gain these in any order, which is why the bookmark can be helpful to keep track. Once you've gone all the way back to the start and closed the book, you'll now once again open the book to its first page. You can now remove the bookmark. This action allows you to close a book early and voluntarily, but if at any point you close the back cover of a book through either the activate or turn pages actions, then you get to immediately close that book going through the same sequence for free. This could be a much more efficient way to get the book closing rewards, but as with most options in this game, it can be quite situational. The sixth and final action is to advance on the civilization board. This is a critical action. A lot of the game's victory points can come from these tracks. When you take this action, you may pay to advance as many steps as you can afford on these tracks. 
Simply move your marker up to the next level and then pay the cost shown on the right hand side of that space. Do this multiple times on the same or different tracks. If ever you gain one of these icons, it allows you to advance on the matching track or a track of your choice, ignoring the cost printed on the board. Whenever you advance one of your markers into one of these light coloured spaces in the first five rows, you gain an immediate reward and there are two options. First, you can claim the reward printed on the space. As you move through the middle of the board, this will include gaining immediate victory points based on certain icons that you currently have in that book, or for files that you're currently holding. Here for example, you'd look through all the pages currently in your red book and gain three points for each different icon you'd obtained. Here you'd gain four points for the single icon you had the most copies of. Then at level 5, you'd gain points for each step you'd advanced on one of the other coloured tracks. Your second option is to forego the printed advantage to advance the matching coloured objective. You can also advance an objective with this icon. Simply remove the top objective tile from the stack of that colour. Then gain one of the bonuses printed on the back of the tile, and then discard it. You can never discard the very bottom tile. Each of these objective stacks relates to getting certain icons in the book of that colour. When you advance an objective, you make the objective more difficult to complete, but the number of points you'd score higher. These are an all or nothing prospect. Make the objective harder, but fail to meet it, and you can't go back to the easier one. You would simply score no points for the objective. The red objective requires you to have two, three or four of a certain icon, plus two matching of any other. And you can bolster those with a token bonus from this row. For green you want three or four different icons in your book, or four plus another copy of a specific icon. And for yellow you want the depicted icons in an unbroken sequence somewhere in your book. This would score for this yellow objective, but in this order, they would not score. Once you reach the top row of the track, you unlock endgame victory points for each page you have in that coloured book. Any subsequent steps grant you one of these bonuses, and you can't use any of these steps to advance objectives. That covers all of the actions, and there's only a few more icons we need to show you. When a card shows some combination of pages as part of its cost, here for example two green or three matching, you must have those currently above your player board. But you don't need to spend them, simply have them and claim the effect. When you see a cost like this showing pages that must be discarded, then you must have those pages above your player board and discard them in order to resolve the effects. To resolve this effect, you must have reached at least step 4 on the matching coloured track. And finally, this specific icon with the black X lets you take one page from the discard pile. After 16 rounds, the chronicle is closed and the game is over. To the points they've gained through the game, players gain points for any top row objectives they've unlocked, for each of their top objective tiles they've completed, and one point each for every five leftover pens, paper and files. The player with the highest score wins, if tied whoever has the most files remaining wins, and if still tied, victory is shared. And that's how to play Books of Time. Thank you so much for watching. Everything you do will help us. Every single view, every time you like the video, let us know if you have any questions and comments, and see you next time.